grounds we could leave the light on. Yes, yes. <laughs> 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 I will go home. <laughs> I'll take my shit back home. <laughs> okay. This person <clears throat> greetings all. Um, this presentation is an offshoot of a couple of papers I wrote, the well, hopefully publication, um, from one of my graduate classes on the cloud. Basically what's it's gonna cover three kind of things. Uh, the first basic setup in terms of definition of the cloud. Probably a lot of you have already dealt with the cloud, at least started looking into it. This just gives an overview of when you, when people, when the company starts sending you uh, papers and say, well, what's e EBT, ESC, XA, what all this stuff means. Code types, what are, what are those, you know, I, I, ISS, PSSA, the cloud types, <coughs> cloud conventions, you know, public, private, If you're going to go into the cloud, things to look into. What's out there with open source and proprietary clouds and some of the things in the future. It's a basis on three papers. Actually, four papers. Uh, first question. What's the cloud? Anybody got any? That's the thing about right now is there's so many different definitions of what the cloud is that Nobody really knows. Yep. Most papers. What I like is better to set a physical machine that after computing we offer computing resources to a virtual machine provision and we can recollect it dramatically. Basically what it means is it expands and contracts as it's needed. That's about the simple. You'll be surprised at how many people use this type of mentality to figure out what they want to use, who they want to use for the cloud. Oh, let's go with these people. Let's go with these people. We'll wait for you. <coughs> these are some terms that you get in a lot of uh, papers, documentation stuff that people send to you. CLC, that's called Cloud Controller. UEC, Ubuntu Enterprise Cloud, which surprisingly enough is really, really good. EBS, Logic Storage, or Amazon, EC2, Amazon, Eucalyptus. This will be up on the website, so you'll have all of it. You know, virtual machines, <coughs> simple storage services, load controller, storage controller. <coughs> this is what we currently have. This is how it usually happens. You manage everything. You install it, runtime, all, everything. What the cloud does, it's a, it kind of makes it a little bit easier. There's a three main types. IAS, PAS, and SAS. The acronyms. What do they mean? IAS. Infrastructure is a service. If you want to read it, go ahead. The voice is what it basically means is they handle the underlying stuff. You send your information to them. Better way to look at it is the picture book. They handle the bottom section, virtualization, service, storage, networking. You just throw your data on top of it. That's not like a stack. That's just a no, that's <coughs> uh, they have like the, they have, they'll they'll give you a network IP. They'll give you the storage you're going to connect to. They'll give you the servers, and they'll set up your virtualized sections. And you throw everything else on top. You put your application on top of it, and you throw your whatever OS you want on it. They're just giving you the basic hardware. So it's basically just with this with this type, you're just getting a, a virtual machine out in the cloud that's you, it. that you manage yourself. You manage well. That's another side. I'm kind of that too. But yeah, they'll give you the virtualized information. And you throw your stuff on it. Right. You buy it. You know, if you need ten, you buy ten sections of it. You buy however you want it. Those are the major companies that you're probably familiar with. Both of them: Amazon, Microsoft. VMware, Rackspace, Ubuntu, Eucalyptus, Red Hat, and there's others as they expand out. Pat, I, I'm not sure if you know the answer to this question, but uh, I know some companies, they sort of use Amazon, um, they provision part of Amazon or something. These all have their own separate data centers or whatever that physical structure 
there's two. They do it in kind of two different ways. Mm -hmm. They will actually use Amazon's data center, mm -hmm. and then they will sell you the services that they're handling. They're they're kind of doing it this way. They're they're, okay. they're selling you this the bottom section. You know, they're selling you the infrastructure as a service, and then you install it on machines that they maintain, which they pay to Amazon okay. to own. It. So so Amazon not only does it directly, it also is like yeah. a wholesaler. Because you can go out, you can you can buy an Amazon, say I want oh five thousand instances and then you can sell them off. Mm -hmm. Right, pay a lot for Yeah. Platform as a service. By programming or runtime environment with scale computer data structures, assembling it, user development, executing and application. And of the heart. They're handling everything but the data and the application. So they handle giving you an operating system. They handle giving you well, how you connect to it. You put the data on it and put the application on that. Google App Engine, Auxer, Salesforce, those are some of the little bigger ones <coughs> that do that. There's a whole lot more. Final way. Software as a service. This is true, what people really think of as cloud computing. This is how they think this is the cloud when they really go into it. Because it handles everything. They give you everything you need. As in, it's totally opposite of what it was originally, where you manage everything, they manage everything. A lot of uh, oh, s small companies that are going to do uh, for example, uh, a rollout of a new application. They'll do something like mm -hmm. this, and as people start using they can just expand it, and then after the application's out, and it's being running and everything, they say, well, we don't need 50,000 instances anymore. We only need 10,000. They can shrink it. Citrix meeting, you know, Webforce, as things expand, this is a true expanding and contracting ideal about <coughs> Any questions so far? Cool. Okay, quick enough, huh? And this is just that little thing I threw up on showing, you know, it's started from one end to the other end. So now when people say, well, I want to do platform as a service, they all understand what they're getting into, what it means. I, I don't understand how someone can give you the data. Well, they'll give you the underlying uh, well, how do I want to say? It looks like they give you this, like with Citrix, go to meeting. That's what I, that's what they mean by data. You you have the app, you run the application. They manage everything in the back end, and as more people need it, it expands out. There's not it's not really data as right. we are thinking of data like stored on our hard drive. No, it's usage to use the application that data. <laughs> I say Citrix Automated or WebEx, right. a lot of the big ones where they have a, they may have a big presentation that needs to have 5,000 people and they get access to it at one right. time. By data, with, with these services, by data what they're talking about is the data that's flowing through it. The Because you're ha we're having an online meeting, me and Mary, because you're, you're in Oklahoma, she's in Boston and I'm here in Detroit, so we're having a WebEx meeting. The data is the transfer of all that information through the network. That's what they mean by the data. We're not managing it, they're managing it for us. Right, they manage it for you. Okay. Okay. I call that more the application. Right. But, but it's actually data. It's move, yeah. you're, you're moving a ton of data. Yeah, as you're that's fine. Moves. That's what a lot of people yeah. think. That's, that's part of the issue with the cloud now. Yeah. There's no and real no definition right, exactly. on what everything means. Everybody reads it differently. You look at, you look at everybody's, this is what we say, this is what we say. <laughs> we told it, but they're doing the same thing, but they mean it's really different. So that's, don't feel bad. <laughs> Many other companies are still having that problem. Yeah. And until somebody somewhere comes up with some type of an ICANN or something that says this is a definition for cloud computing, it's never going to get better. Yeah. It's, it's getting there because more and more people are using the same terminologies, the same you know, business structures to do it. It's getting there, but it's still the fact 
But it's still the Wild West. I mean, you talk to somebody about infrastructure, and their infrastructure can be platform, mm -hmm. you know? Because mm -hmm. there is no standard. And even this varies too. But you may get some people who they think your infrastructure is all the way up to your data, or all the way up to right. the middle way of your OS. It's still, this is just generalization. Mm -hmm. Types of clouds. Obviously public, private, and hybrid. <coughs> what is a public cloud? Yeah, too much to read here. <coughs> Pipe providers, pools of resources, you know, this is kind of like, uh, oh, you're. Uh, just your general Amazon style could be considered a public cloud. You throw up stuff on there that's open, available. What about something like uh, Box.com where you upload? Box could be, Box is kind of a, steps like that are kind of hybrids. Hybrid, okay. But they're public in a way that you don't need extra resources or extra equipment to connect to it. You just go to an IP address, use your, use your browser, yeah. Dropbox is more of a hybrid because that's the one where you have the folder on your hard drive and it syncs to the cloud when whenever you're on the internet. But Box doesn't do that. You don't have anything on your hard drive. It's all out there. You should have a little application that Not for Box. No. That's Dropbox. So, yeah, Dropbox. There's two. There's one called Box, right. and then there's one called Dropbox. Yeah, Box. Dropbox. Dropbox is the one with the application on your, mm -hmm. where where the, your Dropbox a box. is a folder on your hard drive, mm -hmm. and it synchronizes with the with the one in the cloud. Yeah. And that's the one that's more of a hybrid. Box itself is total cloud. Because mm -hmm. we use them both. Mm -hmm. Which one you see, which one you find faster, Dropbox or Box? It depends on what you're doing. What about security wise? Do you it, have access? security is yeah. I think I think the same either way. What's nice about Dropbox is if I'm in a server room and I need a file from my Dropbox and I don't have a ready I mean, without crawling behind a rack and plugging in a network cable, getting access to my laptop, that file's on my laptop as long as the last time I synced it was there in the cloud. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas with Box you don't have access to that if you don't have access to the internet. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, if you don't have a copy on your own right. hard drive. Whereas well, with Dropbox, your Dropbox folder on your hard drive yeah. syncs to the one in the cloud every time you connect to the internet. It's like copy. Right. Uh, so the other one. Pat, are you going to talk about uh, the situation, um, for example, on Dropbox, if, say, a half a million people all have placed the same file up into the Dropbox cloud. How that gets handled? Uh, I could go. I will. Well, because it covers. I kind different of I heard, and different companies do that differently. The way I heard, I heard Dropbox uses ZFS with deduplication, so that there's really only one file. In there. Yeah. So it, it looks to you like How, you got it. However, there's a company that does. There's a cable company, I forget where it is, and it's when they got sued and they won. Because the, they the, won. You mean the, company the, the cable the company, company won. Over the, like RIA, I think it was either RIA or the movie, and I, one of those IAs sued them, okay? Because they said they were infringing. Because what it was was they took the DVR out of your house. The DVR was at their location, and you, you were able to control it and record whatever you wanted to record and then play back whatever you wanted to play back, but the DVR was no longer in your house. It served it to you over the network. Okay? And they did not use deduplication. So if you recorded a show, it went into your private allocation space. And if I recorded the same show, another recording of that same show went into my allocation space. And by not using deduplication, by you having your copy and me having my copy and Pat having his copy all on the same show, that's how they won their, that's how they one against uh, the, the movie industry. Because they weren't sharing. Exactly. Because well, everybody recorded their own one. It just that happened that, that the hardware wasn't in your house, the hardware was at their location. I see. So. And there's another company right now who's in court that, what it is, it's a New York City thing, and they're doing broadcast television over the internet. Because so, it's. Time if Warner? You, I, I don't know, it's not Time Warner. But the, what they're doing is, 
all the broadcast TV that you can get in New York City, like there's Channel 4, there's a Fox, there's an ABC, mm-hmm. you know, and then there's Channel 9 out of Secaucus, New Jersey, also that, that broadcasts into New York City, which is an independent, like Channel 20 is here. And uh, so all that broadcast TV, you can give them like five bucks a month and get it over the internet. And what they've done, how they've gotten around it is, in their offices in Manhattan, they have a little bitty antenna for every customer. That antenna is your antenna for the broadcast TV. So so they are making the same claim that the, that the cable company that did the DVR is the same thing. Look, it's got, they've got their own antenna. It can receive the signal. It's not actually, it's just, it's, it's just there as a, as a way to get around it, you know what I mean? And then they're brought, and then they pipe it all out over the internet. Because what happens in New York City, the big buildings and your signal yeah. gets a wacky in some places, and you can't get the broadcast TV, you go on the internet. But they're they're suing this company, saying that they can't do that. But I think they'll win. I, I think, think that they'll I, lose. I, I think, think they'll, they'll win. The individual antennas, I think, is going to tip it over. No, I don't, no, I don't think so. I think they'll share lose. the content. There's it's live content, though. There's no. They're not recording anything. The only way they'll lose is if, if the uh, plaintiff proves that those oh. antennas are not functional. I don't know because it, because you're, they're they're suffering no damage because. But you're getting they're, they're all, all the ads that they have sold are still being presented to the viewer. They're not. But they're not paying the retransmitting fee. Exactly, they're not. And but they're still putting the ads for the original. It doesn't matter so because because the networks make revenue from the advertisers. Correct. And cable companies have to pay what's called a retransmitting fee. The cable companies makes a deal with Channel Seven and says we're going to rebroadcast your your broadcast right. and we'll pay you. So yeah. many X dollars to do that, and then they recoup that money from their subscribers, you know, and mass. Yeah, and every and everything. This company is not doing that. That's totally you're right. They're getting around it, and their way around it is with these thousands of little antennas in their office. But they, like, totally. you do have a point. But they still are rebroadcasting it from that antenna. And I think they're functional. So I, I, see, yeah, I, so I don't think they're the doing. They're actually a functional a antenna. They're actually a functional antenna. They do work. And they do feed into the system. Okay, but I really don't think that's what's feeding out to you. I no. think they're. I think they're. They're got one big antenna that's then to feed out. But they are functional antennas. Well, they, they could be functional antennas, but if they're not hooked up, I still think they'll they lose. are hooked into the system. But are I don't they? think it's what they're using. Because that would mean they. The would article I read said that they were all hooked in, but it, it wasn't clear about how it was being broadcast. Are out. they hooked into the system that's broadcasting, or are they just hooked into a dummy I'm system? I'm not sure. It wasn't. It wasn't real clear on that. Because I was going to do this for our podcast a couple of weeks ago, but then I decided it really wasn't. Linuxy and open source E, so I didn't do it. But because I read a lot about it, I read like five different articles. I know one time, you know, a friend of mine had Myth TV, right? And Myth TV provided a service that supplied the information needed for the Myth Box to work. You know, the, the station and the time and the right the program, like a TV guy, had it. like a TV guy had it. Well, they started charging five dollars a month. And he said, well, I ain't going to pay for that. Well, once he stopped pay- once he stopped using it, he had to manually program the myth box. Right. Because it no longer had that information to go by. So, you know, Myth TV was now making money from this information stream, even though everything else is open source. Right. But you can't duplicate it. It was just a convenience thing. Yeah. You know, it's sort of like, okay, we'll give it to you for free. Now, all of a sudden, here we go. We're going to charge you. Well, a lot of people do that. Yeah. What is that? Look. So there was a couple years ago, um, it's, well, you, you have a box on your machine at home that is connected to the internet, that if you want to watch TV through the internet, that box. Oh, sling box. Sling box. Sling box was sued by the, by the industry for that type of thing because they would even though they took your signal from and your send body, it back out to send you. it back out they were saying well you're retransmitting the signal they lost the the record industry and that lost because right. basically back it's your signal Sing- to begin with. Box one and it's one. within your premises correct that could be what could say that other group because mm. being you own you have that antenna all you're doing is resending it out again but I'm just wondering if it, if that's true are they sending a stream for every separate person? See, I don't think or they're doing that. I, it wasn't clear. The articles, I read like four or five different articles on it. 
that different people had written up, and, and, and it wasn't clear in any of them how the rebroadcast was actually working. Hmm. I assumed that those antennas were feeding into the system, and then that, that feed was just getting... And they were rebroadcasting out from one big source, source, one big feed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's that's why I assumed it. I have no idea because none of the articles I read were clear. Yeah. So uh, see, I know Dish Network now will sell you a, sl a sling box to your home network. Oh, they will. Yeah. Wow. Really. And they got another. Is thing. it a sling box or is it just, is it just their their Rebranded. their branded DVR? No, it's a sling box. It's a sling box. At least uh, and when I went to the website, it was a sling box. And then they got this other thing for rebroadcasting uh, the content of your DVR or your your your, your satellite box. In, yeah. And I think it's all it is basically a, a Wi-Fi dongle that sticks on the back of the box and broadcasts a Wi-Fi. Hmm. You're making it to see that the media industry needs to change. Well, see, the, the trouble is, 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 well, not the trouble, but the thing is. The record industry was making money because you had to buy the record. The record industry is Te right. Technology says, okay, well, we can't transmit it except over the radio waves. And then along come computers and the Wi Fi yeah. and everything. They're just not keeping up with technology. And, and they didn't keep up with technology. Because now, you know, an artist can go, uh, like some will have, I'm gonna walk through that. create an album and, and just release it on the internet for free. Well, you heard about a few of the. To the record, or the people doing that who got a oh, who got a takedown notice by their own record industry, even though it's their media that they put out there, saying, "Well, wait a minute, you can't do that because we don't." The guy says, "No, no, no. I wrote this above and beyond any of my contract with you." YouTube pulled it down, and all these places pulled it down because the record industry told them <laughs> because That's it's a, a copyright issue. Plus, it's not a copyright issue because the record industry doesn't own what you created. But see, we don't know the terms of the contract. That's the other thing, too, yeah. Because I know a lot of bands, were when they were created and they signed the contracts, they didn't know it, but they were signing over their creative... Creative, creative rights, creative... Creative, creative rights to their music, because uh -huh. that's the only way the record company would handle them. Yeah. You know, it's sort of like her writing a book, and the, the that's publisher's another saying... That's big thing, too. The publisher's saying, you know, I got... I own oh, you. Okay. I own you. Because there's ebooks is another new, you know, e-readers would well, normally those contracts I think are for a specific amount of something, two albums, three books, um, mm. or time based, you know, the next yeah, three so years. Or so then, then the fight's in. Okay, so if they write this thing and they want to write it outside that contract. Um, it's a challenge yeah, then because now it's 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 as, as, as a publisher of your music, I get to decide what you get to publish. Right. Not you. Because I get first crack at any music you create. Mm -hmm. And if I say, well, I don't want to publish this now, but I'm going to hold it over here for a few years until I decide to publish the greatest hits on it. You still can't, you know, you may have created it, but I still have control over when it's released. Mm hmm well, now, so I heard that th about this one band, they had like a manager, and then they decided the manager cost more than purchasing the rights for their own satellite channel. So they, they, they bought their own satellite channel and eliminated the manager and went direct that way. <coughs> so technology's gotten that cheap, you know? Mm -hmm. Technology gets much to the dislike of all the old media. Which even does. <laughs> Back to the private cloud. Private cloud is just what it says. To the cloud. To the cloud. <laughs> the world would be better with the cloud. I put a lot of extra stuff in there. Anything all that's saying is private cloud means your resources, everything, is either on site with you or you are totally controlling. You need to go through, people need to go through you to get to it. That's really all that's mean. Anyone want to finish reading it? Hey, Drew. Hey. <coughs> Actually, you, get, you get a higher degree of security control over the private cloud, obviously, because it's private to you. And basically, that means is, you know, you, you're going through one cloud to get to all the services. The services itself, some of the services can be elsewhere. They don't have to be locally, fully locally to your machine, your uh, data center, where they could be elsewhere. It's just they go through you to get to it. Um, 
And then the hybrid is actually what it says. It's, it's a mixture of both. That's kind of what your, your Dropbox-ish style setup is. You connect, you have no idea if you're going to an enterprise, if you're going to clouds elsewhere, outside the world, whatever. <coughs> this too, all these private, public, uh, <coughs> public, private, and hybrid, that's still in flux as well. So what I'm saying now may change in six months, in three months, in two years. Two years, it may change from Monday. Mm -hmm. Now, everyone want to go to the cloud now? Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> nice to walk. We, we have a cloud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the cloud we have an EC2. An EC2? For, for Big Blue Button. Some issues with the cloud. This is what, what this is another one, one of my papers, but it's really, really cool, some of the stuff they've had on it. I'm going to go with proprietary cloud issues first. Oh my God! Oh, a leap here. That's oh not. That's, <laughs> that's child's play. How about things like? Well, I'll get to it a little bit later. Okay. You decide. You define a system, and people know the way. You know, <coughs> like probably a lot of you have seen this. You know, cloud will increase your profits. The cloud will help you comp help you compete. But what they never say is what the privacy policies are. Will they even let you? You know, how many people even ask their pri to seek their privacy policies? How often do they change? When will they change? Do they change and you never know? <clears throat> some, of the, some of the key issues. Who's responsible for the backup? And if there's a backup, is it encrypted locally to you? Is it encrypted to them? Can you get the backup disks from them if you want them? That's still debatable. Who owns the data? Well, when I leave your service, do I take my data with me, or do you now own my data? Mm -hmm. first, well, that was the first thing that went to my mind. And, and that's what scares me about the cloud. cloud. Mm -hmm. Who owns the data? You know, so what you access do you really have? Mm -hmm. Kind of like a storage locker. The closest I come to using the cloud is I oh. have a VPS. What's, what's, my, what's that cloud. favorite lawyer thing? Possessions nine-tenths? Yeah. <laughs> I'll depend on the <laughs> agreement you've got with this is the, yeah. your idea of where the, where the cloud A lot of the cloud services, they're not in the United States. They have places all over the world in a lot of, shall we say, unstable countries. So if the country decides, hey, I'm going to cut off the internet, which basically means I'm going to cut off your data, how are you going to get to it? Why are you going mean, to do? Fly to. Istanbul or whatever. Say, I want my data and the company's going to go BAM! There you go. People don't think about this. It's, it's, uh, that goes back to the issue of they put the information on the hardware. Who can access your hardware? Can the local IT people access it? Can somebody in India who makes 20 cents an hour, somebody comes up and says, I'll give you a thousand dollars if you make a copy of this section of data. And you know, how are you going to know if they do it or not? There are there are papers out that actually explain and give you ways of testing if somebody's copied your data, when they've copied your data, who's accessed your data. There's ways of oh. using things like VPNs or encrypted connections so that even though your image is on a server here, the people here don't have access to it. They can't touch it. I, yeah, Pat, I was going to ask, uh, actually just was going to ask a question about uh, encrypted containers in the cloud so that, you know, I, I mean, and TrueCrypt comes to mind. It's probably not a great example. Oh, it's a perfect example. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. Especially Where, if you use Dropbox. Because I, cause I think I heard about it first from you, and I use it now at work, and it's great because it's just in the back, when, when I supply the credentials, it's just in the background, and I, I have access to everything just like I normally would. When I close it down, oof. Do you use the hidden... Uh, the hidden volume within the main volume, because you have an option. If you have a you have a main volume, it's used. My my you know my like my partition. But there's two. You could actually set it up and so then you have a, a hidden within that. I have a container inside. A yeah. Container. Yeah. 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 With um like Possible customer deniability. sensitive customer information, so that mm -hmm. if somebody got it, they'd have to crack that container to get. Well, they, they'd have to crack two containers. They have to crack the original container. Okay. Which yeah, because they two crypt off on a tangent. Two crypt is kind of cool because it allows you to. It looks like a file, but within that file, you can put another container that's encrypted. Mm -hmm. Depending on which password you use, you can either have the hidden one be seen or the oh, unhidden I one see. be seen. And if you have the unhidden one 
the standard ones here, they don't know if there's anything else in there. So okay. it's puzzled drivers. So you give somebody the password to this container, they don't even, and they have access to it to use it, they don't even see that the other container is even there. Correct. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So it's plausible data ability. A lot of people are using that with Dropbox because of the issue that Dropbox, you put data up there, Dropbox has access to it. They can pull it off if they want. Uh, the federal government can come in and go, well, we want, we want this data, this data, this data, this data. Even though, they, even though Dropbox said, well, we can't do that. Yeah, they can. They even proved to do it. But yeah, back to, you know, let's say, let's say this is a cloud server. These are all the services here. You have access to all these boxes. You can pull data off. You can put data on. Exactly. You know. I can image a hard drive, and now I've got a complete copy. Mm -hmm. That's there why are, I stuck to, I want to stay away from the cloud as well as I can. <laughs> there are papers and uh, pre uh, 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 ideas that people are working on to prevent that. Like I said, they're, they're encrypting it to the point where the IT person doesn't, the, the local IT person can't get to it. Or if the person does access it, by mathematic, mathematical voodoos, <laughs> they can tell, hey, this data's been accessed at this machine at this day. It's, a, it's, it's like, if you want to see the paper, I have the paper there. They're like, mm -hmm. math is ugly. <laughs> 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 that's too much reading. <laughs> math is beautiful. It's just, it's just the headache caused by trying to read all of it. That's yes. <laughs> yes. Listen, these are questions that people never ask. Yeah. You know, can your IT people access it? Will they let you? You know, if you go, if you talk to uh, Microsoft or Amazon, says, "Well, we like, we want to go in and access our servers. Will they let you?" They're gonna say, uh, "No, can't. We have to do it." That's what you have to. So the thing here, what else you have to worry about? <clears throat> and then things like, how do you know when it goes down? Well, if one of these boxes dies and your data gets blown away, how do you know? Do they, are they going to send you a message saying, okay, box, blah, 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 went down? Or are they just going to go, well, we'll just forget about that, spin up another one? And you know, how do you know that the data you're writing out there has not been filtered through something else? How do you know that all your boxes have the same data? There's papers written, or being written, and there's ideas on how to this. On setting up so you go through third parties that it does check sums of every bit of your data on every server which okay that's cool and all but as you do check sums that requires computational power that can slow things down so you have to even spin up more machines to take care of when you're checking the data it's gonna slow this box down so this one has to sp be sped up well then how do you know that this data is fine <coughs> it can be a there's a lot of work still needs to be done The question I think one of you had is, you pull the data off. You want to pull it from Ace, from Microsoft to Ubuntu, and you want to pull it from Amazon to Red Hat. Will they let you do it easily? Some do, some don't. But uh, this is all, it's cool reading. Uh, some other issue that you need to think about too is, okay, I'm going to set up a, a new instance of 70 machines. How do you know when you set up that instance who else is on your system? How many other people are using that same hardware? Or if I do, I'm done with this hardware now, how do you know that the person who is wiped, how do you know the data has been wiped completely? There's papers written out that you can verify, you can find out what type of data was on there previously through certain mathematical and statistical setups of each box. Or you can find out, the cloud provider will say, well, nobody ever knows who's on our boxes. You wouldn't know, you know, what else is on there. That's bullshit. There's, there's a uh, paper written out that at a 70% of the time, I can find out who else is on my box what other instances are on the box I'm using. Now, is this uh, a situation where you're using one of the established vendors, or is this a situation where you're, you've uh, provisioned 
a part of the Amazon. Established vendors. They did a, they did a test yeah. on Amazon like EC2. Like Rackspace or something like that. Right. They did a test on Amazon EC2. Mm -hmm. They bought Amazon EC2. They specifically wanted to find out who else was on their system, and they were able to do it 70% of the time. Mm -hmm. IP addresses, local IP addresses, the box IP addresses, not the outside, the box IP addresses they were able to do. So let's, people don't think about this. People are like, well, it's got to be safe. It's it's a proprietary. It has to be it's safe. Yeah. <laughs> Never. I didn't think it was safe when I first heard about it. Well, wait a minute. You're saying stuff to a server, you don't even know who, what or where. Because you don't know where. You don't know where. And then once it's once you're done with it, once you think, okay, I'm finished, how do you know it's been cleaned completely? Maybe there's bits and pieces out there that, you know, do they go through and do a... Uh, DOD level? Do, yeah. Do it. We might have backup files that don't jet. They probably might be producing a backup if the drive goes down again. That keeps that idea going. Never know what's going on. Never know. Never know. I said this. I said if, if anybody wants to read the uh, publications, I have the listing of some of them. It's really, it's really eye opening on uh, what you what is never said about the security, the usage, ever said. That's not saying that proprietary is all bad. That's a good thing. And that's not saying that open source cloud issues are the way to go. It's not. There's no problem. Often the application, being it's open source, I start something and then three months from now I'm like, eh, fuck, I don't want to deal with it anymore. I can send it to somebody else or decide, eh, I don't want to deal with it anymore. That's some of the issues you run out with cloud because there are there are open source cloud uh, applications that people start they got that's something else you got to think about in the exact direction. Working the project, somebody says, "Ooh, I like this. I'm going to do it my way," and now you have two Dropboxes or two or two Sparkle shares or two own clouds. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. you, have a, you have Red Hat with their Cloudway, and you have Ubuntu with their Cloudway. They're both open source, and they're both proprietary as well. But they both their own way to you think about it too. Red, Red Hat's not really open source. You use Rev. If you're using Red Hat, you're using Rev, and that's Rev, yeah. proprietary 100%. And then with some of the big, the big thing right now is the intellectual property. You know, right now, Rumor is Apple, or not Apple, but well, Apple too. Uh, Microsoft gets fifteen dollars per Android machine because of their proprietary. They say they have proprietary stuff on that nobody's pushed yet. Which Barnes and Noble, baby. Exactly. Go uh, there. Go go to Barnes and Noble and buy a cup of coffee. Help support the fight. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, you know, your patent trolls deciding. Well, I'm going to buy all these patents, or even though I don't own these patents, I'm going to sue you because I want. YouTube. Did you hear about that? YouTube now. It has this automated set of scripts that run. Oh, they take down. Ta well, they don't. They don't take. They don't do the takedown. They just run the, these automated set of scripts run in the background, and they look at your content, and they they say, okay, this matches a certain footprint. It's probably this song. That's this song is owned by let's say, Wooji Wooji Music. You know, so they send Wooji Wooji Music an email that says, hey, we think this is infringing your copyright. Take a look at it and let us know what to do. Well, Wooji Booji Music never even has to look at that video. Not even all yet. they all they have to do uh. is say to say yes, that's our video. Then once they once that's our content, and once they do that, they have three options. They can either take down the audio portion, they can take down the whole entire video, or they can monetize it, which means they can put ads into your your content now. Okay. Uh. And there's companies out there that are doing this bogusly. They don't own any content. They have, however, registered with YouTube as content owners, and would you, and they're monetizing these videos yeah. that they that they're claiming they own the content for. Because you have 15 days. Once they take your video down, you can debate it for 15, in 15. When days. you dispute it, do you know where it goes? It takes 15 days to do. No, but yes. when you dispute yes. it, do you know where it goes though? Do you know where it goes? Uh, it doesn't go to YouTube. It goes back to the same people that said you were infringing their content. 
Yes. I just did a whole yes. story on that. <laughs> yeah. Because that guy with the with the video about how to make a salad from wild stuff. He's walking through the field picking all this wild stuff, and you hear bird songs in the background, right? They Copyright. claimed that the bird. They claimed that there was copyrighted material, and they they took his video down. It was just natural bird songs. Yeah, they, I listened to Lou the Port and some of his stuff, and his his uh, Twit network gets pulled from YouTube constantly because he makes little videos. He actually did a debate against did that because he had one of them pulled that he knew was not nothing had nothing to do with it. It turned out you have to wait 15 days before. They will put it back up, even if you win. So, so I've had videos I've recorded. Yeah, you know, I do that video in quite a bit. And there's been a song playing in the background. I'm walking along a public sidewalk, videotaping cool cars at a car show. And now, because someone in the car show is playing some music, now my my video is tagged. Yes. You know. It. Tag? it yeah. 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 They've had the audio. So Sorry, then I, I get a message from YouTube and all that stuff. I mean, so they're, they're watching it. They're aware that this is... They're, yeah, because they got these scripts running in the background that are doing it automatically. So now if, if I'm walking down the street and I record Play music something... when the other music is going so that both of them combine and uh, the <laughs> <laughs> I just I just wonder what the legal ramifications are. So that falls under fair use, and your video should not be taken down for that. However, the fair use clause of the Copyright Act has become so perverted by... RIA and the MPAA that it's just yeah, doesn't make any sense anymore. Good old fact. According to the original fair use clause of copyright, if I bought an album, okay, I would legally be allowed to make a copy of that album and give it to you. That is considered fair use under the original copyright. Try and do that now. Yeah. <laughs> Well, so wasn't there like software that had questions about making a backup copy, right? Mm -hmm. So you have the right to make a backup copy of your software? Yeah. You still do. You still do. Right. Mm -hmm. That's why the publishers love EPUB so wonderfully. Yeah. Before, I could give you a book. You know, I read the book, I give it to you, you give it to me. Mm -hmm. You can't do yeah. it. You can, but you can't do it with EPUB anymore. Like, well, if you do that, you have to pay for it. Oh, it's the same thing. So I think there are some... Uh, if it's, if it's, if it's straight like, EPUB, you, you can, can because EPUB has no DRM. Yeah, EPUB has yeah. no... Yeah, but, but you also can lend electronic books. Yeah, and Amazon has come up with that lending thing now, yeah. too, where you can lend your... Where then, while it's lent out, you don't have access yeah, to it. Yeah, But well, that still has uh, to yeah, go to the cloud. Were, and how do you verify... Uh, what was the company a while ago? It's a... It's a... Uh, uh, gaming company that... To use the game, it has to connect back to its server to verify that nobody else is using the game and you have access to it. The problem is that server in the background died, then you can't access to it because you, then you can't use the game. Well, it's the same thing that happened, remember, I, I, it must be eight years ago now when uh, Microsoft's Genuine Advantage servers went down. Yeah. Remember that? And everybody's legal copy of Windows was all of a sudden illegal because the genuine advantage servers were down. <laughs> but all the pirated copies were still running along fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh. And then obviously, there's just crappy software out there. No. Open no. source crappy? Oh, See, it ain't so bad. Oh, yeah. Not open source, no. Yes, yes. Only yeah. the proprietary stuff is crappy. I'm sorry, your now. eyes have now been open. Oh. <laughs> Software can be not open source. <laughs> yeah, proprietary open source don't matter. Yeah. Um, now this this section just talks about what's out there. Some of the criteria was, you know, I want to make sure that there's support for it and not IRC. I want to make sure that when you pick up a phone and call a number, a live person reach it. You can reach a uh, live person. And also, they've been out there for at least a year. I think you should add another criteria where a live person then you can understand. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that knows what the answer is, right? I mean, so it doesn't matter if you have somebody there that, you know, was sweeping the floor last week and now they answer the phone. Yeah. You've got someone who knows what, what the product is. Yes. That's who. There's a whole lot of them. It's just the two things. Don't go through, you know. Apparently, Cloud Yarmouth and Google, Amazon, Microsoft. Ubuntu has its private. Ubuntu is kind of cool because it has both a private and a, and a public cloud service. Eucalyptus, which if you, have, if you really want to read something interesting about Eucalyptus, they actually have 
a not so much a monopoly, but on the front ends of Google, Amazon, uh, and Cisco, and not so much Microsoft. They run the front ends of a lot of that stuff. They run, they manage the uh, servers. They manage the individual virtual machines, they, and they actually have a, a proprietary and a open source, which is the same thing. Service. That's kind of cool. And there's, and there's no, it's expanding constantly. There's more coming in, more going out. You could create one if you want. Open source. Thing. The, the three babies are we're going to Luke Eucalyptus and like I said, you. You could be both an open source or a private. And again, th these terms change. You know, I'd say that this way you could talk to another group of people and it's a totally different way. So that's what you have to that's you still have to there's no locked in, this is how you do it. This is what it means. Uh, Pat, I'm kind of curious. Did your research also um, lead you to take a look at things like um, Opera's Unity and uh, I think Tornado, you know. Now, I, I played around with Tornado for a while and I liked it. My little my little Tornado plug server burnt out, but um, I'll probably get another one at some point. But Opera's um, is kind of interesting because it runs in a browser and I think the knock on it um, is that it's not secure because I don't think it runs HTTPS but if you keep it within your own network it's probably not as big an issue as if you put things out and click the share box. I was just um, kind of curious if you heard anything about uh, Opera's Unity. You f you're familiar with I think uh, it's Unity. the Kindle Fire? Yeah. Where they have their, their browser? Um, I mean I'm familiar with it. I don't have one. Well, so I'm not that familiar with it. They have two, it's kind of the same way, they have two ways to look at it. Mm -hmm. You have the standard way which they set up and you have the private way. The standard way goes up to their clouds. When you're browsing, you're going, their cloud is browsing for you and sending it to you. That's how it's fast. Okay. Or you, ha you can shut it down and it's, it goes from, it's from the, ki the, uh, the uh, Kindle Fire out. Mm -hmm. So that's, because okay. there was an issue, oh, when was it? Last? where their browse servers went down and a lot of people couldn't get because they didn't know they could shut it off, they could flip over. And there's also, there was also another issue where they're, as you're browsing, they're watching your data and they're sending you ads. They're, they're logging everything, every place you're going. So there, was a, there was an issue about that. As well. That's something, you know, how do you know? Yeah. A lot of things still out there. It's still like, Open source, the Wordle Cloud Server, 1004. You know, that's kind of so I mean that's big, actually bigger than Red Hat in their in their cloud. There's some mis there's some misnomer to that because Red Hat with Rev, a, a majority of the time because I just did I just did a thing about this last week on the podcast too is uh, is actually the second the second one in. Most of the time, companies, when they start with virtualization, they start their virtualization by using uh, like a VMware type product and, virtu and, 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 and virtualizing their, their less mission critical stuff that's running on Windows servers. And so that, since that's the first virtualization product they're used, that's, their, that's considered their primary virtualization product. Now, once they've gotten their feet wet with that and they're used to using virtualization, now they're using Rev and virtualizing their more mission critical Linux servers on Rev. Okay, so now they're not listed as the primary virtualization server though, because they're the second one in. And eighty percent of the Rev applicate Rev deployments that are out there are that way. So really, they should be higher than number four. Currently, Rev is the number four virtualization platform out there, but they should be much higher than that. They should be like uh, at least number two. Much higher. They should be about number two. Places. Still, but. <laughs> When you're talking four, it's much higher, man. <laughs> <laughs> but but because there actually a, is a much larger number of deployments out there than are being counted correctly right now. So, yeah. um, for a, a project I did in class, we actually set up in a Bluetooth cloud server. Uh, pretty quick. You need three machines to do it because you need one of them is actually the controller machine, and then the two are controller machine. Storage. That's another thing. To it. Well, Rev requires Windows to run the controller. 
really? Yeah. Just like just like Amazon and even Ubuntu requires you to install a or parts of Eucalyptus as the controller to control mm -hmm. everything else. Um, if, the, if you have 1004 server, you have cloud services. You can you can set up a cloud. It's an option. If you gotta have the 1004.3, I believe is the uh, the. Uh, did, did you say that that uses Eucalyptus? It uses the Eucalyptus at the front end. Okay, because I remember seeing that I think in the repository. That yeah. Because uh, Eucalyptus is a controller. That's kind of what it, it, okay. it controls how the data gets across, how the servers are up and running. It's down the load. Um, yeah, I think it's. That's it's an entire multiple presentations on just setting it up. Uh, it's it's easier than I thought, but it's still a pain in the ass because you have to set up once you set you set up the three servers, that's nice. You still have to set up the virtual machines within each one of the three servers. And depending on how big your box is for each one of the three servers, you may be able to set up three, six, five. And oh, one thing I read across, did you know that uh, Amazon's EC2 servers can only have seven instances per what they call block. You'd think that, okay, I have a machine, I have some multi-million megabit or multi-million uh, down the machine with gigs of space. I can put hundreds of thousands of instances on there. No, you can't. There's a physical limit to how many instances you can put, no matter how big the box is. Uh, and that's because they're virtual machines and they all have to provision RAM and there's only so much, right? Well, <laughs> it's even more than that. Yeah. It's so it's it's because the person who programmed it to very begin with was lazy and put only X amount of numbers. Right. That's why. Uh, that's entirely uh, that's true. That's why. Because if you're running your own type of like if you're running if yeah. you're running virtual box yeah. and you've got right. some big massive you can have ten thousand VMs running on it at one time. But with EC two you can. Yeah. The limit. <laughs> I read that. I was like, "What? This can't be right." It was. It, it's almost as stupid a mistake as the. Oh my God! There's a leak here. <laughs> <laughs> You're never gonna fit out of you. Oh my God! It was like so many of those how people. How can you make such a mistake? That's like a first-year programming mistake. So mean. Sounds like the guy was working for Microsoft originally. That's the way they work. Microsoft Azure did do that. That's who I'm talking about. Microsoft Azure went down because they forgot yeah, about. I know. They forgot about leap year. Uh, well, well, hell, they forgot uh, about Microsoft. Microsoft the 2000. Yeah. Like, yeah YK2, yeah. you know, they forgot about YK2. I read that. I heard that, when I heard that in the morning. I'm going, whoa. Whoa, 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 this is Microsoft. They don't go down. You can't yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah. And, and hey, not only that, Pat, before they had the entire system, you know how long it took to get the entire system back up 100%? Uh, a week. 36 hours. 36, 36 hours. 36 hours. It was totally down for six to eight, depending on which know, source you read. Know, but, but it was totally down for six to eight hours. Man. I'm and, and it rolled around the globe as as, <laughs> as, as midnight it. came in the different time zones. It was like, oh my God, here it goes. So the world, the world. people that were a little behind in yeah. the time zones could see it coming, yeah. maybe, or... It's not about that. Yeah. Yeah. Microsoft didn't tell them there was no time to get your instance yeah. moved somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the cloud is a wonderful place. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Unless you're running on that. Sure. Yeah. Open your yeah. practice yeah. and then it. That's an open source cloud. Yeah, wasn't that the one that was developed? NASA has a hand in that? Yeah, NASA has a hand in NSA has a hand in that. Um, all the Red Hat, um, Sushi. Yeah, that's the it's a big bunch of them like got said, together and did that. They have two types. They have the proprietary that like the Amazon uses in that. And then they have the open source, which is pretty close to the proprietary, other than support and that. Um, but if you load Ubuntu, you're loading that. Or parts of that. And then uh, specialized options. Um, if you want to set up your own cloudish way, what's out there, what you can use if you want to use your own services. <coughs> Oops, that would be some of those. Most of you are familiar with EOS? Yeah. That's a cloud. Oh, iOS? Yeah. Well, iOS, yes. EOS, iOS, boy. Oh, yeah, yes. I've used it. Oh, yes. Um, that's considered. That's actually considered the uh, uh, software as a service, true cloud. Yeah, you had all these little web apps, mm -hmm. word processing, spreadsheets. Yeah. Kind of iOS cool. was dead. No, it's, it's actually running pretty well. Yeah. Uh, the new version, I think, is a pain in the butt, but it works. 
it's kind of cool because we had this on that Ubuntu service and we had a couple of them. It was smart enough to know we, we, we set the limit to like two, so after there was the second instance, it would spawn another one. It could spawn it, kept spawning instances as it's it, and you never knew. Hmm. You could log off, log back on, your image was, you know, whatever you set up was exactly the same. It well. <coughs> Own cloud. This is neat. I have, the, I have one of these running on my servers at home. It's it's a file sharing setup where you, uh, it's a, it's like EOS file share where you have, you go to a web page, upload, download files, um, images, whatever they're, they're not encrypted per se, but you can set it up with, with TrueCrypt to encrypt them, decrypt them. So if you, like, uh, you want to set up a place where you can throw files up, you can set up one of these on a simple uh, Ubuntu box. And it's a whole package. Once you install a package, it loads everything. Sparkless yet. That's the closest to Dropbox. It's it's new. It's, it's a little bit less than a year old. So I, I threw it in there because it was close to open source version of Dropbox. I have played with it, other than what I read about it, and it, what, if they get it the way they're it's going to do it. It's just a horrible name. Who's going to use that except for 12 year old girls? Oh. Come on. <laughs> Sparkle oh, yeah. Shares. Yeah, well, I, I'm kind of curious the evolution of that name. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody maybe like that, whatever that movie was. Sparkle Share. I guess they have yeah. Sparkle Share for Windows. This is Sparkle Share for this Mac and Linux as well. You know, I think you have to go to a different site. Oh, okay. <clears throat> But it's an, if you don't want to use, if you feel like you want to set up your own Dropbox, you can set up your own Dropbox. Mm -hmm. Dropbox-ish. B Drive. Now, this is interesting. It actually sets it up so every PC you own, you run the B Drive software, and it's, a, it's, it's its own image of, it's its own server. It's its own storage location, but they're all... <coughs> Together. So it looks like it's a folder on your. Yeah, it looks like a folder, but it's 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 a. Uh, uh, each each machine is its own cloud. Is kind of what it, what, I'm, what the way I way it explains it. So if you put something on one machine in the shared folder, it will replicate across the. You could set up to do. Or you could have each like one that. has its own cloudish. You know, expand and contract by oh, itself, okay. but they can be connected. Okay. It's, it's interesting. It's it's not really out yet, or not really a lot of a lot of write up about it yet. But kind of write up something. It's kind of cool. Kind of cool. B drive sounds like something from the DOS world of you know. Yeah. I think because they they did talk a little bit about the uh, Amazon, not Amazon, uh, Google's um, um, D drive. D drive. Kind of talked a little bit about that. The future. Three, there's three, in what I've read and what I kind of think, there's three ways. One way could be, top way, it just goes crazy. Everything is just a mess. Nobody has to go anything. Everybody has their own way of doing things. Ugly. Like a scenario. Kind of like it is right now, yes. The second one, the bottom one, is you have three or four services and they are on high. You must bow to them. The Microsofts, the Amazons, or the whatever. The way I like, and what I've, what I hope happens, and what I've been reading, it, the people are pushing toward is the other way. Everything is a cloud. You have your own cloud that's yourself. You don't think so? Why not? I'm just not sold on clouds. No. Well, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not talking. But well, it's if you want to get to your stuff, you know, you you have the control of it. You are the owner of that of your stuff. It's not. I don't go to Amazon, or I don't go to Microsoft, or I don't go to to uh, Ubuntu and use theirs. It's yours. It's always with you, always around you. I don't know. You, you know, Pat, when you're talking about security and all that, really, how much of your stuff would you 
would you not want, I mean, well, I guess the way I'm trying to say it is, how much of your stuff is so, so secure that it's leakage up to somebody else seeing it would cause you grave damage? Probably not a lot. Um, I, you would never scan your bank state, or I would never scan my bank statements or any documents that have like a social security number or something like that and put it in that. I, I keep that locally or I print it or something. But your bank has a cloud. How do you know that they're handling it? True, right? true. That's true. But you can't do anything about that unless you don't bank. <laughs> 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 which, uh, which, of course, is an option. I wonder how many people have actually gone to the bank and said, okay, I want to audit you. I want to see how your operations are set up and how you work. I mean, they're going to let you go in. Hi, I don't think so. Hi. Um, who was it I read that just recently where they tried to sue this company and it was written in their privacy policy that you are not able to sue this company under any circumstances whatsoever? I wish I could remember what that company was. I mean, I mean going, wait a minute, why did this company did. Yeah, you look like that's unenforceable though on its yeah. face. It's like when, like when, when you were younger and you used to go to the roller rink and they would have the signs up around the roller rink that said "skate at your own risk." Mm -hmm. Yeah, that mm -hmm. don't mean anything. If you still fall down and hurt yourself, you can sue the shit out of the roller skating rink. <laughs> Why do they allow that? Yeah. Huh? Why do they allow that? Liability. Liability. Yeah. They have them up there to try and prevent you from suing because you would think, oh no, it was at my own risk. Now I can't sue, but you really can't. It's but you wouldn't sue. Me? Yeah, you would. No, I would not, actually. See, I know you will. Think about, you know, <laughs> you asked your idea about uh, public stuff. Think about Facebook. How much stuff, how many people have a Facebook account? Uh, uh, oh, I, I have a fake name. It's not my full name. I, I have a Facebook account. How I many people are linked to you? I'm fine How much that. control do you, over, do you have over what they talk about you? I don't accept friendships of people I don't know. It just sits out there, and I don't, and I only use it for certain things, like uh, a lot of newspaper stuff. Yeah, your deep, all your Detroit Free Press yeah. posts. Yeah. <laughs> come back. Yeah. I've changed that a little bit. You don't see as much now. <coughs> no, I don't. Because I, don't. I, I yeah. unhooked it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, my wife put her uh, hers out there with uh, a last name that was uh, an ex-boyfriend's last name. I said, well, wait a oh, minute. <laughs> <laughs> Started wondering there, Gibby, yeah. did you? <laughs> She's got two husbands. Yeah. <laughs> She'll spend a lot of time in Texas. But yeah, I think about how... how well, what um, about that big of a city that's got caught because of Facebook? What? what? I didn't see this one. Yeah, this guy got caught because uh, somehow Facebook linked one wife to the other. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because they, they take a look and see how many people in common yeah, people yeah, know. Because yeah. I see, hey, you may know these people, and some I do, some I don't. And I think... I, I, even if I know him, I'm not gonna. So they, so they did a friend request, and they found out they were married to the same guy. Oh my God! Well, did you hear about that? What Target did to that girl? Oh yeah, with the uh, the 13 year old girl that was pregnant, and she started researching on Target's website all these different like lotions and vitamins you would use for pregnancy. Well, she hadn't told her family that she was pregnant, and Target sent a big mailing of all these pregnancy coupons to the house <laughs> <laughs> because they identified that. That this person was probably pregnant because of what they were searching for. <laughs> yeah, they didn't, didn't see it, it didn't work over with Dad too well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, myself, I'm kind of looking forward to the far side where I am my own cloud. I have my own control over what is it, what is here, what is not. How do you but back it's still up? safe. How do you back up? Uh, depends on what I'm doing. Most of it, I use Dropbox. Okay. For. When I do my papers and I pull up in Dropbox, it's easier. But a lot of times I, out, I d image it to another drive. Yeah. Well, Attorney yeah. Ubuntu, you, you uh, the backup that's included with that, and it, it didn't have enough space for what I was putting out there. And I, I didn't know, I you know how, to, how to select things. I don't need to back everything up. But no. So I guess um, you have to learn the, all the interfaces to the tools. And yeah, what, is that, what is that backup? Uh, Bacula? Backup is a Linux backup. Yeah, it's backup. Mm -hmm. That's a nice backup. Because it allows you to, you can use it to tape, you can use the hard drive, you can use it to external media, and you can set it up so the individual directories. It's, and it's, it run, you can run it through either the command line or you can use uh, Webmin as a Webmin image. Mm -hmm. But again, it's the future. Nobody knows. I've, things I've read, they're saying it's going to be, everybody's going to have their own. And it's going to be puppies and pickles. The world's going to be wonderful. 
I'm Good. not saying it's only going to be three or four, and you're going to have to Can't follow what you want. Stone tablets. <laughs> I like that. They last a lot longer. Actually, mm, they grow. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Pat. Good information. Yeah, that's great. I'll have it up on the. Uh, uh, you guys want PDF or do you want. Uh, uh, Our secretary isn't here, so we can. Yeah, he's not here. I'm sure that you can just give it to us in the whatever LibreOffice defaults. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, I'll show you. What's one here? This is the one on cloud, on third party cloud leakages to tell you what and how, you know, the Can you send that? Yeah, I can send all that. I don't okay. Know. But they yeah, send them all the, to, uh, to me. Discuss? <laughs> Discuss? No, uh, Tony. <laughs> Tony. <laughs> Anthony. Secretary at the MD Lug. <laughs> yeah, the empty chair. Yes. Secretary. <laughs> People are doing some good research, some interesting research on security and things like you go through a third party. Yeah, we'll put it all up with your presentation you if you send it all. Verify it by send um, it all hashes on. or encrypted hat. It's it's. So it's where is it you found these papers? I mean, is this? Done, I was done for one of my graduate works. The, a lot of this, the presentation are is off of the papers I did for my graduate work. Okay, so it's your material. It's okay that we publish that on our yeah, website. It's all okay. it's all open anyway. I just had to ask. You know, I think the way you can do it is uh, is you have an encrypted container in your hard drive, and then um, when you're done with it, you just pop it into your Dropbox folder, and that encrypted container gets backed up. That's how you do it, too, Craig. Okay. That's how they recommend you do okay. it, too, Craig. In fact, the way they, the nice thing about the the Dropbox and TrueCrypt is it only it does the it, it updates only the blob that's changed. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot quicker. Mm. Originally, it would update the entire TrueCrypt. So if you had a two gig or whatever size of the TrueCrypt, you got a thirty gig. Yeah, because I, I buy it now. I, oh, okay. Because I, I have a lot of stuff back then. It would do the whole thing. Yeah. Now it just does a little blah. Oh, okay. Um, if you That's go to, I don't know if it's TrueCrypt or Dropbox. One of the two places it actually explains how you do it, how to set it up, uh -huh. so it automatically mounts. It um, when you unmount it, it makes it, it, it images it. So if anybody wants, you know, if you're interested in a little bit deeper and part of it, let me know. You keep okay. saying that the, there's there's classes that you're you're involved in. Is that stuff that the public can, you know, purchase uh, <laughs> like class time on, or is that? Uh, the no, it's for University of Detroit Mercy. They have a. Okay, so you have to be in their program to actually attend some of these classes. What, what campus? Detroit. You do Mercy. I live right by there. Yeah, that's right. That's why I've got my... You're in uh, Livernois and Six Mile? Mm -hmm. <coughs> that's right. Yeah, I'm just north of there. I can walk to that college. Uh, I finished off my one degree, or actually part of my one, mm -hmm. and working on the second one. And it's just now that I'm able to take graduate level classes, I, I found the computer ones that are kind of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, thank you for... Mm -hmm. So if you have any interest in different parts of it, let me know. I have lots of other stuff. Okay, right. thank you. Now, if you